So every day of your life, you need to wake up saying, Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Over my children, more grace. Over my family, more grace. Over my business, more grace. Over my endeavors, more grace. Over my ministry, more grace. Rato Shapalatasa.
your hands and worship his majesty you can give him praise excited to be in God's presence yes, sir. hallelujah God. let, let me say something before I preach if this Christianity will work for you you must love God more than results you must love God more than things you know as we were worshiping that was what God was saying to me if you are still in church, if you are still serving God because you need a house, you need a car, you want to be rich, you want to be... De it will never work for you. I'm telling you. Because there will come a time where you would see all these things are not working. He said to Peter, lovest me more than these things. 
I know you came to church, you want a word from God. You want this to happen in your business. You want this to happen in your career. And we'll be talking about the mystery of the blessing. Yes, can God do all of these things? Yes, he can do more than it. But do you love God more than these things? Do you love God more than your position? Do you love God more than your activities? Do you love God more than it just being a fan club? How much do you love God? Lift your two hands to the heavens and tell God how much you love him. Lift up your hands, lift up your voices. Tell God how much you love him. Father, I love you. Father, I love you. Even without the results, I love you. Even without the miracles, I love you. Even if things did not change, I love you. Father, I love you more than the things that you do. Lord, I'm not after you for things. I'm after you for you. Father, I love you. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody is greater now, yes. Nobody is greater than you. Nobody, no. Nobody is greater. Nobody is greater, no. Nobody is greater than you. Nobody is great, no, no, no. Nobody's great. Nobody's greater than you. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I'll be speaking to us very quickly. Please still stand. About generational blessings. Please stand. If our fathers are sitting, please don't copy them. They've stood for years. I'll be speaking to us about generational blessings. And you know, we started from the series of light. And we are here now today. But you know our convention is coming up. If you're excited about it, let me see your hands. Trust me, we would see the glory of God. Amen. It's not just going to be called from glory to glory, but that glory will be evidenced here in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we'll be doing something every Sunday. We'll be internalizing this glory. You understand? So I will say to you, from glory to glory, you will respond that that is my story. I'd say from glory to glory, you would say, that is what? My story. From glory to glory, that's where... No, there are three of them. From glory to glory, number one, that is my story. From glory to glory, that is where I am going to. Did we get that? Then from glory to glory, the last one is, that is my name. Are we blessed? Okay, so let's try it now. From glory to glory. That is my story. From glory to glory. That is where I'm going to. Then from glory to glory. That's my, my name. I decree over your life that from now your name becomes glory. Amen. Your career becomes glory. Amen. Your destiny becomes glory. Amen. Your family becomes glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. from glory to glory that is my story from glory to glory from glory to glory so shall it be Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. now we'll stand together reading God's word Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 by now you should know it is anybody still there you know this word led us into talking about the mystery of the blessing Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 let's read together like a mass choir one to go and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is what? In heaven. In heaven. And we went to read and study in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 8, about the blessings. So we'll read it together again. You know, like you know in church, the goal is not newness, but freshness. The same thing we've learned before, we'll learn it again, learn it again, learn it again, till it becomes. And the military are the best for it. You match in what? Review order, numbers, code one, two, three. They can match you, but they will still be calling it so that what? It can become a part of you. Okay, let's read together. One to go. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord. Okay. 
to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You can please sit on your enemies. So we see that we have looked at quite a number of the blessings in that place. Are you still here? Yes, sir. So today we'll be looking at verse 4. Blessed shall thou be, or blessed shall be the fruit of what? Thy body. So what is the first blessing that comes out of your body? I'm asking. They are your children. Because your children came out of you. And now you read in the Bible talking about the loins that somebody paid tithes in the loins of somebody. Meaning that your generations are already seated inside of you the way you are now. There is no place that we go to buy children. They are all here. So at the time that you desire, what do you do? You bring them out of you. So the Bible is saying that blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Meaning that whatever comes out of you ought to carry what? The blessing of God. Child of God, it is the will of God for you to be blessed. We have established that already. Is anybody still doubting whether God wants him to be blessed or not? God is very much interested in your blessing, in the blessing of your spirit. He's interested in the blessing of your soul. He's interested in the blessing of your body. What God came to give to you is what we call all round blessing. No wonder the Bible says in third John chapter 1 verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest do what? Trust. Above all things. There are other things that God wishes for you. But above all things, he wants you to do what? To prosper and be what? In health. Even as thy soul does what? Prosper. Prosperate. Meaning that he wants you to be in health. Health refers to what? Your body. So you cannot be spiritually sound and on fire for God. And your body is permanently riddled with sickness. Is anybody still here? Yes, yes sir. God wants the prosperity of the spirit, wants the prosperity of the soul, wants the prosperity of what? Of the mind. Because anyone that does not prosper is a lovely way for the devil to attack you. Is anybody still here? Yes. That is total and all-encompassing blessing. Now, child of God, God is not just interested in an individual. God is interested in a generation. God is interested in a lineage. God is interested in a posterity. He is a generational God. He could start something with you, but ultimately he is looking for the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth generation. That's how God works. Is anybody still here? Yes. Please never get to the point in your life where you think that everything God is doing will start and end with you. No, sir. Even in your iniquity, the Bible says visiting the iniquity of what? Of the father on the children to the what? To the third and fourth generation. So even in blessing, it is the same thing. You know, some people will tell you that I will live my life the way I like and after everything, I will just die and go. No, sir, you can die and go, but your trace will still be following what? Your generations to come. God is a generational God. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. Do you know?
know that even all your services, all your sacrifices, all your prayers, everything that you are doing is a seed for more. It does not end with you. You know, the problem with us is that we are myopic in our understanding of scriptures. Some of you think that the God you are serving now, you are serving it just for yourself. It's not correct. The God you are serving now, you are serving that God for you, for your children, for your descendants, for the people that are coming after you. And the God you are also not serving now, you are doing so against your posterity that is coming. Is anybody still here? Yes. Sir. Can we set scriptural foundations to see that God is a generational God? Genesis chapter 9 verse 12. Genesis chapter 9 verse 12. Let's read together like a mass choir. One to go. And God said, This is the talking of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for what? For perpetual generation. Meaning that God is making the covenant with you, 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 you. But that covenant is what? The one that will last for what? For many generations. Perpetual. Meaning that there is no even a time to the end of that covenant. Is anybody still here? Yes. Genesis chapter 17 verse 7. Let's read together. One to go. And I will establish what? Covenant. My covenant between me and what? And thee. And thy seed after thee in their generations for what? An everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to what? To thy seed after thee. God was establishing the covenant with a person called Abraham. He's saying, I will be a God to you, but this covenant will not end. Even your children that are not aware of what we are doing now, they would come into the covenant of me being what? A God unto them. Is anybody still here? We are laying foundation. I'm teaching today. Exodus chapter 3 verse 15. Exodus chapter 3 verse 15. Let's read together one to go. And God said, Moreover, unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of who? Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, had sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial unto what? All generations. I'm sure you've studied your Bible very well. You know who Abraham was? He was the one that God gave the covenant to. His son Isaac did what? Came into that same covenant. His son Jacob came into what? The covenant. After that, we saw Manasseh and Ephraim also doing what Joseph rather before getting to Manasseh and Ephraim. Generations coming into what God already did. Is anybody still here? Yes. Psalm 22 verse 30. New King James Version. Psalm 22 verse 30. Let's read together. One to go. A posterity shall what? Shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next what? Now let me explain that scripture. He's saying that what? A people. He's talking about somebody. Serving who? God. It now says that God will count it for the next generation as what? As a people that have already served him. This is how deep generational blessings happen. Your grandfather did something that caught the attention of heaven. And heaven recorded it on behalf of what? Of the generations coming after that. Now generational blessing is something that God starts with a person but does not end with a person that has a life of its own that can move from one generation, move from one generation to what? To another. Let's look at the life of Abraham. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 18. I will not read that story. Genesis chapter, 1, verse 20, chapter 22, verse 1 to 18. Now God said to Abraham, he said to him, sacrifice your son, to me. I'm sure you remember that story. Yes, sir. Do we remember that story? Yes. 
We remember that story very well. Oh, yes. Okay. And if you read further, God said to him, Sacrifice your only son. How many sons did Abraham have? How many? One. Two, two, two. He had two. Biological. He had Ishmael. First, 14 years older than who? Than Isaac. But how come God was still telling him your only son? It meant in the realm of the spirit, God was not aware of Ishmael because it was an human error that tried to truncate what divinity was doing. Only son, I decree that you will not be out of God's agenda. Amen. You will not be out of God's plan in Amen. destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, this is the most disheartening thing. You know, if his father forgot, we can remind him. But when God that created you looked at your family and said he can't see you, then, then what do we cry to? Is anybody understanding what I'm talking about? Yes, this was God talking, telling him that what? Your only son. How can a man have two children and God is saying that what? Only son. Who killed that other son? I decree over your life by the spirit of the living God. Oh, Jesus. Anything that has made you to be forgotten in heaven, today we wipe them out. Amen. Amen. Ah, your amen is looking for my trouble. Amen. I say anything that has made you to be forgotten in heaven, today we wipe them out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That is a prayer point for somebody. Heaven might not just remember that you exist. Is anybody still here? Yes. Okay, you read the story. After that, what happened? The Lord said to him in the night, Abraham, sacrifice thy only son to me on Mount Moriah. Can you remember that story? Okay. You know, you've read Bible so much and it's easy to analyze. But can I quickly ask a question? Can I demonstrate something? Can I? Yes. Okay, Elder Kinlabi, please come. Dickness Kinlabi, please come. Talk back, please come. I know you're on the console. Come, come, come. Let's just... I want to use it to analyze a point. Please let me give them the mic. Dickness, please come. Oh yeah, talk back, come. So this is a family. This is the father. This is the mother. And this is the son. So that you will know why God activated a covenant on Abraham. You would know. So, sir, the Lord spoke to you last night, and you heard it very clearly, at about 2.30 a.m. And said to you, I need Tokbe. Sacrifice him for me. Will you tell your wife? It's difficult for me to believe it was the Lord. <laughs> and he announced himself to you, I am Jehovah. <laughs> if I believe, I will not tell her. Why, sir? Because I know she will not allow it. But will you still go ahead? Yes, because I believe I will go ahead and do it. Okay, please, let me give her the mic. Just imagine your husband just woke you up at 3 a.m. and said, I just heard the voice of God. I'm going to sacrifice talk by in the morning. I will tell him it can't be that. That is not true. That is not true. I will tell him it's not. I'm sure it's not the Lord because it's the, no, it's the Lord that gave us. But the Lord will not, if the Lord is going to speak to you, will also tell me something for me to be able to... Okay, you're in charge of God. You, <laughs> you manage God. <laughs> but I, I will not, I will not... Okay, paraventure, he told you, what will you do? Will you let Tokpe sleep very well? Okay, so Tokpe, your daddy called you at about 3 a.m. and said to you, Tokpe... This morning you shall be sacrificed to the Lord. So what will you do? Will you still wake up in the house? Do not find me in the house. What will you do? Do not find me in the house. They will not find you in the house. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, so you know. So you, you know we read Bible a lot of times. And we don't know why God blessed Abraham. Now, the Bible says 
that God spoke to him and said, Now, Abraham, sacrifice, as in now. The Bible says the next morning, Abraham did what? Rose up early. He did not need to tell his wife because if he had told his wife, trust me, would have been written about Abraham as one of the scriptural failures. That covenant God wanted to activate with him, that day that covenant would have failed. So what thing that Abraham did firstly was to go against the odds. He did not care the consequence. Do you know some of you why you've not served God well? Like I say, if God speaks to me, I don't confirm it from anybody. Now let me say something that would possibly upset your theology of marriage. You know, some of you will say God spoke to you to give a seed or to do something. You can't confirm from your husband. I'm sorry for you. After God has spoken, any validation of God after that will end in catastrophe. Some of you, why you did not do what God said you should do was because you spoke to your wife. It's upsetting your theology of marriage, right? And, but we are talking about what? The voice of God, not your father. Anybody that speaks after God is a noisemaker. Is anybody still here? Yes. We don't validate God by the opinion of men. So what Abraham would have been trying to do was to validate the voice of God by what? The opinion of his wife. And trust me, would never have activated the blessing. So when God speaks to you, the first thing you do is to do what? Is to rise up what? Early, 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 early. Be like Abraham, early. He spoke to you about a seed. Don't think about it. Do it what? Immediately. He spoke to you about service. Do it immediately. He spoke to you to pray. Do it immediately. He spoke to you to give. Do it immediately. Anything God says should be done what? Immediately. We have seen, if, God, if Abraham had told Isaac that I'm going to sacrifice you, he would never have found Isaac again. That's it. If Abraham had even told the two servants that were going with him, they would have called him, Isaac would be a good guy, oh, but let me just tell you, then go kill you tomorrow. <laughs> My God. You know, the other day, mommy did not give me food. You were the one that gave me food, so I, can't, I have to repay you by telling you. And at the end of the day, Abraham would have been what? A monumental failure. Now, child of God, what do we learn from this? The first thing is prompt obedience. If anybody will activate generational blessings, you do what? Prompt what? Obedience. The Bible said to him that Jesus, God said to him that now. And the Bible also says that what? Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is what? The time of what? Of salvation. God is the God of what? The now. God spoke to you five years ago. You are still debating it, child of God. And you are wanting him to put something on you that will span your generation into generations coming. God spoke to you three weeks ago. You say you are still praying. Are you trying to confirm the voice of God from the devil? God spoke to you. God. Prompt what? Obedience. The second one was total obedience. Not just prompt. Do you know when God said to him that your only son, in fact, God gave him a good case. For the next two weeks, we are arguing, God, but you know I have two sons. Which one? God, because you have made an error, I have to fast for 14 days. To He's a liar. He's not the fast. He's trying to look for tactics to escape. But God knew what he was saying when he was saying your only son. But Abraham did not get into an argument. Abraham did not debate it. Abraham went with what? Total obedience because he himself knew who the child of the covenant was. Is anybody still here? Yes, God spoke to you. He told you something to do. You did it halfway. Only you know that you did it halfway. And with God, 99.9 .9 obedience is what? Total what? Disobedience. Abraham had all his trust in God. Because look at it. If he eventually got to Mount Moriah and sacrificed who? Isaac. 
please, which home was he going to? Now I'm asking you now, which home was he going to? So by that obedience, he already knew that as he was going, he wasn't coming back. Is from today I live on Mount what? Moriah. <laughs> House address changed immediately. Because his wife would say, even if she can't beat him physically, she will poison him. <laughs> so it was what? A life of total obedience and trust in God. You know, some of you, God has spoken to you, but you have used your physical senses to calculate for God. And you say, no, no, God, if I do this one, no. How can I be serving you? I will go Sunday, Saturday. I went to work Monday to Friday, and God is looking at you. Okay, okay, you went to work Monday. Me, that I, have, that I don't sleep, I don't slumber, what should I do? Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. He was ready to risk anything to obey God. Ready to do what? Risk what? Anything. To do what? To obey God. Now let's read from verse 16 of Genesis chapter 22. Let's look at what God said to him. And said by myself, have I done what? Have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done what? This thing. And has not withheld thy son, thy only what? Son, do you know that God by himself tells us not to swear? Are you aware? Yes, sir. Okay, let me show you from scriptures. Give me Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to 34. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to 34. Let's read together. One to go. Again, ye have heard that it had been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Continue, verse 35. That is God's throne. Nor by earth, for it is what? His footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of what? Of the great. So God that told him not to swear did what? Had to do what? To swear. Based on what that man activated. A level of obedience that God had never seen. Is anybody still here? Yes. James chapter 5 verse 12. James chapter 5 verse 12. James chapter 5 verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and let your no be no, so that you don't fall into what? Into temptation. But there was something that Abraham could trigger in heaven that could call the attention of divinity. It was what? His obedience. So, child of God, what are you doing to trigger God's attention to your life? The Bible says, because thou hast done this, child of God, what are you doing to get evil's attention? Forget that Abraham decided to sacrifice his child by the instruction of God. You, what are you doing? What services are you rendering to activate it? Generational blessings don't just come. People activate them. Do you know there was a servant of God, a preacher in this country. He said that he gave a seed one day. And after giving the seed, God said to him, He said, let me tell you, even if you decide to be poor, from today is already too late. Did you understand what I just said? Today, if you decide that I want to be poor, God said it's already too late. Because what? You have touched something that has triggered heaven to act on your behalf. Child of God, what services are you rendering that your family, your posterity will come into the blessing? Lots of what you are seeing. You know, I see people post things on social media. God, if my prayer is not working, listen to the prayer of my mommy. What will your own children say? You don't know that's the, the statement of a failure. What will your own children... So what is happening in the realm of the spirit? What we are doing now, we are reaping the dividends of our own parents, what they have prayed. But we are, as we are reaping their dividends, we are also doing what? We are also planting. We are also sowing for the generations to come. What will your children reap from your life? Outdated cars, outdated clothes, outdated houses.
what prayers are you offering? Do you know some people, the way they got their generational blessing was through intercession. They prayed so much that God looked at it and said, no, no, no. We cannot leave this lineage because of this person. Some it is in their giving. You, you are a big boy now. They are talking to you in church. You left the workforce. You said, what is it? Are they God? Oh, your generations will find out. When they remember you, they will know we had such a useless grandfather that could not activate anything from the heavenlies. And you wonder, some people get into life and their life is so easy. And you are wondering, how did their life become easy? It was nothing they did. It was something that who, somebody had been praying for on the altar of prayer. Is anybody still here? Yes. Child of God, you can even use evangelism to activate the blessing. You will win souls to a point that even God will look at it and say, we are owing this family. You know, God owes no man anything. But there's a way you will save God that in heaven they will feel that they are owing your lineage something. That if you have not done something for this lineage, then heaven is wrong. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. Your altar needs blood. Your altar needs blood. This kind of services that we are rendering, this kind of prayer that we are praying, this kind of Christianity that we are living is not the one that can bring generational blessings. Your altar needs what? It needs blood. Do you remember the story of David? That he just woke up one day and said, I needed the water of a particular place. What happened? The Bible said three men did what? Fought their way through the battle. To do what? To bring him what? The water. water. When he saw the water, he said, no, this one is what? Is blood. And what did he do? He poured it on the other. There's a kind of service that you will give to God that even God will look at it and will see blood everywhere. And we know that the blood does what? Speaks better things. Is anybody still here? So let me tell you, it's not just prophecy that brings what generational blessing. People activate it. Is anybody still here? Yes. Let's look at the dimensions of the blessing. Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 and 18. The first one, the Bible says, In blessing, I will bless you. Meaning that as you are serving God, as you are activating certain covenants of the Spirit, God says what? In blessing, I will do what? I will bless you. Meaning that you will be the first person that God will do what? Will bless. But do you know that there are men that God blessed and their families came back cost? There are men that God blessed, their generations came back cost. Because the blessing could not transcend them into what? Other generations. But I decree over your life that every good thing God is doing in your life, it would find its way into your generation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the Bible went in verse 17 to say, In multiplying, I will multiply what? Thy seed. Do you know what God was doing at that point? He was adding speed and favor to the generations that are not yet born. So sometimes you wonder, why is my life this easy? Even when I know they pray, things they happen. My brother, that's a, that's a very demonic testimonial. Even when I know they pray, things they happen. That does not, you are reaping what? The prayers of what? Your people that came before you. What will your own child get from you? That you did not pray and it happened does not mean it's the way to live. So God applies speed and favor to what? To the feet of his children that come in after him. Because he what? I will multiply thy seed. Do you know sometimes initially multiplication does not look evident? Are you aware? It does not look evident. When God has applied multiplication grace on your life, sometimes you and your colleagues start, it still looks the same. But over time, over time, they just discover that it appears that you are one year ahead. 
It appears that you are two years ahead. It appears that you are now like 10 years ahead. Over time, they become what? People that come to celebrate and bow before you. Because what? The grace that was upon your grandfather as what? Or upon your grandmother as what? Has found its way to your life. I decree over somebody's life here. Receive the grace for multiplication. Amen. Receive the grace for multiplication. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible goes further to say, Thy seed shall possess the gate of what is enemies. Do you know what gates are? Is anybody still here? Yes. Gates are what? They are access routes to any place. You cannot enter a compound without passing through what? Through the gate. So the Bible is saying that what? Your seed shall what? Shall possess. Did not say your seed will go to the gate. It means your seed will have easy access to deal with demonic situations that stand to oppose or restrict them. This is a grace that is transgenerational. It's not something you just wake up to come by. Somebody somewhere must have activated something that makes you fight easy. Possessing the gates of what? Of your enemies. I possessed the gates of my enemies by the prayers of my parents. I'm telling you. So what I'm doing now, I'm just sowing. I'm what in my season of harvest. You know people that they boiled you with proper prayer. We, we did not have any other thing than prayer. So you, that you are there, how will your children possess the gates of their enemies? Easy access. They own the gates, possess. When you possess something, what does it mean? You own it. So you own the gates of your enemies. You walk in and you walk free in the territory of the devil. Is anybody still here? Yes, sir. Psalm 127 verse 5. The Bible says, Happy is the man that at his quiver, what? Full of them. They shall not be, what? Ashamed, but shall do, what? Speak with the enemies, what? In the gate. Now understand that they speak to the enemies at the gate. He's not talking about having conversations with the enemy at the gate. But he's talking about taking authority over what? The powers that are doing what? Operating at what? The gate of your destiny. But these things don't come easy. They come by what? Persistence, consistency on the prayer altar, in service, in giving, in living a life that is sacrificed totally to God. You know, child of God, some of you now, it looks as though you are sleeping in church, you are living in church. Every time you are going to, and your friends are mocking you. Wait, wait, just wait for their posterity. Like my father will say, sometimes it's not where we planted it that we what? That we reap it. Sometimes you will plant it. It will be five generations to come that what? We will reap it. Is there anyone left in the house of Saul that I may what? Show him kindness. Is there anyone left? There will come a time God will say to your family, who is still left in the dynasty of Busayo Fulani that I might show him what? Wonders and mercy for what your father did. Is anybody still here? Yes. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast what? Obeyed my voice. Everything God wants to do in your life is too much for God to finish it in your life. I'm telling you. What God wants to do in your life is too much for God to finish. He has to pass on to the next generation, to the next generation, to the coming generation, so that you have what? A consistent flow of the workings of God in your life. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. Now, can we look at Genesis chapter 48? The story of Jacob when he was blessing Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, Jacob was old. And he wanted to bless his children. He was old. And somebody told Joseph that this man is about to die. And he took his two children, Ephraim and who? Bible students, Manasseh. He took it to him. And when he wanted to take them, he used his right hand to take Ephraim and pushed Ephraim to the left hand. And he took Manasseh with the left hand and pushed him to the right hand of Jacob. 
Now, let me tell you something that has worried me or concerned me about this lineage. When it was who? Esau and Jacob. The younger was the one that did what? That got the blessing. When he got also to Joseph and all of that, God went towards the end of that family to do what? To pick somebody. And now, do you know that when it even got to Joseph's children, God still went to do what? To ah, Thank God I'm the last one. God is coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> it tells me God can bypass anybody to come for you. It does not matter. God can do what? Can bypass anybody. To I decree by the spirit of the prophet of God. I decree that everything that God is doing in your family. He starts to do it in your life. Amen. He starts to do it in your life. Amen. He starts to do it in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And Jacob also did what? He crossed his hand to pray. And Joseph said, no, no, I know you might be old. You may not be seen very well. But this is what the older one, this is the younger one. Because what the Jewish people already had what? A belief in what? In the blessing of the father. They understood that what? Generational blessing is possible. They understood by experience that the God that was with Isaac at Bethel was the same God that was with what? Jacob. What they said. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of what? Even the Bible called it like that, not me. Meaning that they had already seen a track record and they understood what? The power of what? Of the right hand. You know, we've talked about what? The right hand of God's power before. Meaning that they knew that if a man stretched out his right hand to anybody, whatsoever he says is what? Is signed, sealed, and delivered by God. And Jacob said, no, I know what I'm saying. God has gone for what? For Ephraim. He said Manasseh will be big as well. But he said Ephraim will be what? Will be bigger. Can I read the prayer that he released on, on them to you? Okay, let's read it together. Genesis chapter 48 verse 19 to 20. And I will prophesy on those prayers. Let's be together like a mass choir. I want to go. But his father refused. I know my son. I know, he replied. Manasseh will also become what? A great people. But his younger brother will become even what? Greater. And his descendants will become a multitude of nations. Verse 20. And Jacob blessed the boys that day with this blessing. The people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, may God make you as prosperous as Ephraim. And Manasseh, in this way, Jacob put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Child of God, have you heard people saying that when you would have money like Otedola and Dangote? Have you heard it before? Yes. And the next time they say it, it will be your name that will be there. Amen. The next time they say it, it will be the name of your family that will be there. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus, Amen. we serve a mighty God yes. that what he says he can do. Yes. He does not just say it. What he says he can do. Child of God, don't be trapped in your background. Your background can only keep your back to the ground. Stop being trapped by the environment. Stop being trapped by the economy. I come from Zion. I operate by the walls of Zion. For he looked for the city which had foundations, which builder and maker is what? Is God. That is where we, we just came to manifest here, child of God. Hallelujah. He said to them, this was nothing Ephraim and Manasseh had done. It was what the covenant that Abraham had triggered then. That it got to a point that they would say in Israel, that no, do you want to be blessed as Ephraim? Do you want to be blessed as Manasseh? What a man did generations to come. I decree over your life that your life right now begins to communicate generational blessings. Your destiny begins to communicate generational Amen. blessings. In the name of Amen. Jesus. Is anybody still here? Yes. Can we look at some of the fulfillments of those promises? Isaac, Gen Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 to 16. If you read, the Bible says, 
that there was a second famine, not the first one, that Abraham went through. And God said to him, Isaac, stay in Gerah. Don't go down to what? To Egypt. And we know what happened. Abimelech got the hold of his wife and the people and all of that. And later they realized that what? That this man was actually married to who? To Rebecca. We know, we know. You know that story. I don't want to go into it. Okay, now let's read verse 12 of Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter. Okay, let's read together. Then Isaac did what? Sold in that land. And received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Continue, please. Keep, keep reading. And the, Lord blessed, and the man did what? Waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of what? Of flocks and possession of heads and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Move forward. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines, had stopped them and filled them with earth. Continue. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than what we. So this guy contacted a blessing from his father that made a man to be richer than a nation. That made a man to be richer than a people. Just one man. Just one man. If you read, it was all about the wells of his father. It was about the prayer of his father. But it came to a time that people looked at his life and said that now you are bigger than no. I decree over your life that every good thing that God is looking to reward in your family, he will reward it over your life. Amen. He will reward it over your life. Amen. He will reward it over your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now somebody would tell me Isaac sold. Yes, he sold. And he was blessed as an individual. But the point where the Bible says he moved forward. He waxed great. He became bigger than all those people at Gera. It was what? Something that was coming from what? From his father. Is anybody still here? Yes. Jacob. Genesis chapter 28 verse 10 to 22. The Bible said he was at laws. And he had the encounter at Bethel. The angel of the Lord ascending and what? And descending. Now let's read verse 13 of Genesis chapter 28. Verse 13. The Bible says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said what? I am what? The Lord, the Lord God of Abraham thy father. And the God of what? Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee, will I give it and to thy what? See. So God first introduced to him that I am here because of what? Your father Abraham. I am the God of your father. That is what is bringing what? This encounter that you are having now. And the Lord began to bless him. And we know that we studied the Bible. He went on there and wrestled with the angel. And Isaac became great. I decree over your life, somebody, that from today, your life will be the testament of God's blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I have a question for you, child of God. What covenants are you activating that will open the heaven over your posterity? What covenants? What covenants are you activating? Are they prayer covenants? Are they giving covenants? Are they sacrifice covenants? That you will serve God to a point that it will be impossible for heaven not to respond. What covenant are you activating that will shut the mouth of hell over your posterity? Do you know that there are people that don't need to fight any battles? Because all the battle they would ever fight really have been won by their parents. Mm. Case in point, Solomon. And that's why he was just multiplying wives and wives and was sowing bad seed for the future. They had conquered all his battles. You know, some of you, you say, my life, he they walk, he they walk, he they walk. Oh, he's on somebody. Oh. You know, the story was said of a restaurant that they put it there. Come and eat, it has been paid for. And everybody looked at it, come and eat, it has been paid for. And one person entered. They said, it, it has been paid for. He said, are you sure? They said, come on, it has been paid for. And he ate. And after eating, they told him to pay. And he said, ah, I thought you said it has been paid for. Yeah, they said, yes, the one you ate eh, has been paid for, but you will pay for your own children. <laughs> so that's how destiny is. 
Some of the blessings now, somebody paid for it. But will your life be able to generate enough power to shut the mouth of lions against your children? The third question, what are you triggering in the realm of the spirits that you'll be able to pass from generation to generation? What are you activating? Then child of God, are you activating blessings or activating curses? Is anybody still here? Yes, sir. Let's read Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 and we'll pray. Galatians 3 verse 29. Let's read together. You can rise to your feet please. Galatians 3 29. Let's read one to go. And if ye be Christ, then are ye what? Abraham's seed. And heirs according to what? To the promise. So child of God, even if your father, your grandfather, and all of those people were abalists, were demonic people and all, as long as you have come into Christ, the same blessing that was on Abraham that came upon Isaac, you can still get them. Yes. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. You can still lay claim to them. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. So you will lift up your right hand of fire. You will say, my father, my father, my father. My, my father, father, my father, my father. Start something with me today. Start something with me That today. my generations will be blessed because of it. That my generations will be Somebody fire prayer, fire prayer now. Fire prayer now. Start something, Start something with me today. That my generations will be blessed. Start something with me that my generation will be blessed from. Holy Ghost, start something with me that my generations will be blessed from. Start something with me that my generations will be blessed from. In the name of Jesus, start something with me today that my generations will be blessed from. In the name of Jesus, for in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. Amen. Can we have all eyes closed? If there's anybody here that wants to give his life to Christ or a life to Christ, meaning you want to actually receive the life of Christ. Can you lift your hands? Because child of God, if you do not have Christ in your life, forget about generational blessings. It cannot work. It's a covenant. And this covenant comes by sonship in Christ. So if you want to receive the life of Christ, you have the opportunity now. Is there anybody that wants to receive the life of Christ? You want to surrender to the Lord Jesus? Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Today you have the opportunity to receive Christ. And if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, maybe you lost it on the way. Maybe you started chasing other things and you left Christ alone. You want to come back to the cross. You have the opportunity now. You, can, uh, you might have been in church for years. It doesn't matter. The day you come to the Lord, that day new things happen in your life. Is there anybody that wants to receive the life of Christ? Is there anybody? I surrender all to you, Jesus. I surrender on to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all eyes closed I surrender all I surrender say after me father i ask for forgiveness of sins father i repent of my sin everywhere i've wandered from the cross everywhere i've wandered from the christ have mercy on me i receive the infilling of the holy spirit i receive the full baptism of the spirit of god i forsake my sin and i neglect them totally today holy spirit to rule and reign in my life once again 
let your spirit take over my life. I decree that I am saved and I have the life of Christ in me. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. This week I decree over your life by the spirit of the living God that you will not wander in darkness. Amen. Amen. This week your life will not be cut short. Amen. This week I decree by the spirit of the living God that heaven will look for you and find you with eternal blessings. Amen. I decree that this week is blessed for your Amen. sake. Your destiny will not be cut short. Amen. Your organs will not be harvested by the devil. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. as you go out, you are blessed. Amen. As you come in, you are blessed. Amen. The light of God will be a shield over your destiny in the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of the Father. Be blessed in the name of the Son. And be blessed in the name of the Holy Ghost. For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. From glory to glory. 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 Glory to glory.